partition. We have the partition in here. It is the sound that will be runs along the hierarchy of a string. Partition means that when a sound is weak, and then it becomes stronger. So then that the means of partition. Uh, uh, for instance, in that hierarchy, we have the stops. They are the, the, the strongest. Then the fricative, next nasals, and then the glides with the vowels at the end. Um, it's a process that moves a sound higher on the strength scale. It's like what I'm saying that when a sound is weak, and they becomes stronger. For instance, in the, this one, we have this, you. We have a glide, you. But when we are doing rapid speech, we say ditch you. And then that becomes in a jump. And then we see the glide becomes in a uh, stronger phonic, in this case, the jump. And you see? Ditch you. Uh, lanition. Lanition is the opposite. Okay? It's the opposite of this. Um, is when a sound becomes weaker and weaker. When a sound becomes weaker and weaker, that's that's the initial. Okay, but we have to, you know, that can be divided into two assimilative processes, I mean, into two categories. One is assimilative uh, processes and the other one is reductive process. processes. Okay, so in this one we have assimilation. In assimilation is a very broad topic. Okay, there could be a whole semester only talking about assimilation. It's so common you know, uh, in all the languages in the world. And uh, they say they involve a sound becoming more like its neighbor. Okay, in other words, this is quarticulation. This is jargon, okay, in this case. So, quarticulation is another way to say assimilation is when a sound becomes like, you know, the, the neighbor one. And then in here we have to pay attention to directionality. In this case, you know, it's coming from left, it's coming from right, after or before. So that's the thing about this. When we have the diction, uh, this uh, comes about di directionality, then we have these two ones. That is anticipatory, regressive, or left towards assimilation. In this case, it is when a sound anticipates, okay? the coming sound, some features of the coming sound, um, coming sound, okay? In this case, we have pen. In that case, we have a nasal. When a vowel is next to a nasal, it becomes nasalized, okay? And then we see that that vowel is not normal. As, as usually when we do pa, that, that I is not nasalized. But when we do pen, that vowel becomes nasalized. And then it anticipates. The, the, the common uh, sound. The opposite of this process is perseveratory, perseveratory, progressive, or rightwards uh, assimilation. In this case, it is uh, when a feature continues forward from the causing sound to the affected sound. In this case, this doesn't happen uh, usually in the Spanish or in English. It happens in some other languages. But anyway, I have to mention it. Uh, for instance, some languages, if they want to say dog, they say dog, dog, okay? And then we can see that it's moving back, uh, uh, rightwards, and then you can see the assimilation in there. It was a there at the beginning, and then they assimilate that, you know, later. They use the same sound. That happens in children, when they are learning their first language. That happens a lot, okay? Like mom. And then when they are producing their first syllables, this is first language acquisition. And we have all these types of assimilation processes, which is really cool. But we are not doing first language acquisition in this case. Just for you to know the terms, okay? We have also nasal assimilation, people. This is important. It's the most common phonological process in the world. Okay, this happens in all the languages in the world. So for instance, we have the word 10 men in caves. And you can see all of them are spelled with the, are spelled with the letter N. That doesn't mean that all of them are pronounced with the alveolar N, with the nasal N. They are pronounced with different ones and they assimilate to the one. For instance, in 10, it assimilates 
the following sound. We have the, the coming sound is a bilabial nasal. The M. What happened if there is a ten men? Ten men. In order not to do ten men, and then what happened? Our vocal tract accommodates, you know, in order to, to do things easier. Okay, and it's a ten men. Okay, it's like we are doing one sound, but it's kind of long. Uh, in, every time that we have a name before uh, a filler sound, it could be a ka or ga or ga. Okay, we have the end before those sounds becomes a filler nasal. In this case, we have in case. This is very common in Spanish. We do that. I, I, in France, I put the examples here in Spanish. Un beso. I'm not pronouncing un beso. I'm saying un beso. My M is. It's by Libya, it's not M, mm, it's M. Mm. Say un beso. So that is not an N, it's an M. Un beso. Okay, un hombre. Un hombre, in that is it's pure N, that's okay. But what happened with un factor, un factor, un factor? Then that, when we have N in front of F, or this one, or whatever, then this becomes in M. Okay, say un, un factor, un factor. So that's just this, this simple, un, un factor. This say happen with un gato. We don't say un gato, we say un gato. So everything is filler, un gato. Can you feel it? Un gato. Everything is that. Okay, good. Then the next one is voice and assimilation. But the voice and assimilation, uh, this happens in consonant clusters, okay? And in English, we don't have that. I mean, in Spanish, we don't have that. Not that much. That means that we're saying, for instance, países. If we do rapid speech, we say países. That S between vowels become a voiced S, okay? It's voiced. And then that happens in rapid speech. In rapid speech, everything is Okay, so for instance, in dogs, okay, the underlying sound should be the S, but it's in dogs, okay, taps, and plays, okay? Every time that we have an S with, uh, next to a, a vowel, it's usually pronounced with voice, okay? Nasalization is the thing that when we have nasal sounds in a word, all the laterals, the rotics, the vowels, they can become nasalized. No. Palatalization, on the, uh, it's another uh, assimilation, uh, assimilative process. Uh, it is when the high front vowel, we have E, or the glide Y, okay, has an effect on a corona. Now you know about what coronal is. Or in some cases, on a villa, then it is moved towards the palatal vowel line. It's very common, don't you? We say, don't you? Okay, what you see? What you see is, should be the, the one that you have to pronounce is what you see, what you see. Did you know it? Did you, did you know it? Bless you, bless you. As you were, we say in there as, as, as you were, as you were, okay? It's like a... Uh, it just happens when it's close to the pronoun you. Yes, that happens. It's very common with you, yes. Because we have the glide don't, okay? Don't you? Some people say don't you. Some people say don't you. Some people... Okay, that's preparation. Remember preparation? Okay, the other one is uh, deletion. With the issue we have aphesis or aphoresis is a deletion or loss of phonemic stress uh, phoneme or syllable. Uh, for instance, in the Spanish we say some people say the, this, the word has to be amarillo, but some people when they are speaking they say amarillo. So, that's a very good example of naranjo. But a fest is this the deletion of a stress of a syllable. A naranjo. It's an omission in there. Okay. Syncope. 
when you're chasing up this one, it's not simple. It's simple. Okay, it is a deletion of a vowel in the middle of the word. Okay, in the middle of the word. For instance, we have the word every. We don't say every. We say every. Uh, some people even delete uh, syllables. For instance, probably. They say probably. Probably. Okay? Okay, um, an example of syncope, it is the deletion of a vowel in the middle of a word, and then we have the word every, we don't say every, we say, I mean, as English speakers, they say every, and then most of them, some of them, they don't say family, they say family, and then the same for the other ones in here. Uh, apocope is the deletion at the end of a word, so for instance, we have, you know, when we're doing rapid speech and then we have uh, two words we tend to uh, delete some final sounds in this case we have left we know that left at the end it, it ends with, an, uh, with a T with a voiceless uh, voiceless uh, alveolar stop but then in this case it's, uh, it's deleted and then we don't say left behind, it would say left behind. So it's easier in this case. The other type of, of phonological processes in this case is insertion. There are two reasons for this. Is one is preventing clusters of consonants that violate syllable structure constraints in the language. And the other one is easing transitions between segments that have multiple incompatibilities. So a Spanish speakers uh, in the Spanish language has a typical or common or common uh, example. In this case, we know that in our syllable structure, the 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 cluster sp is not a is, is, is not possible. And then what we do is to insert a vowel in order to divide that word in in order to separate those two those two sound the s and the p. And then we have the syllables at the end. So for instance, we don't say special. We say as special, so we insert the uh, vowel. So the same for students, school, and things like that. But then we have to go with the jargon. In this case, process insertion is an, is an insertion of a segment at the beginning of a word. Is the example from Spanish, make a student, they say a student. Sprite. Uh, a parenthesis in this case is insertion inside or in the middle of a word. Uh, they ha this happens, you know. Different depending on the language, which is not typical for English. Um, for instance, arth arthritis, it says arthritis, uh, athlete, it say athlete, and then we can see the insertion that the name of that is a parenthesis. And then finally, that was the last topic of this. It's very broad, it's a very you know complex uh, topics, and there are many examples for that. But then the final point here is to teach you, I'm going to give you a preview related to how to write rules, phonological rules. And then we can see in here, you can see the X, then the Y, the W, and the Z. It has a meaning. Okay. So in the case, the X is a phoneme. Okay. That phoneme, you know, undergoes uh, some changes. And then that arrow means that it becomes in becomes into another uh, phone or, or sound. In this case, it's, a, it's an allophone. Okay, it's an allophone. It, that's the Y. And then that slash means that is that ma that slash means the environment of. And then the W or the Z are the consonants or vowels, the surroundings uh, of that uh, of that sound, the environment that occurs. It could be between, of, it could be uh, after or before of. Okay, you can see here, for instance, pay attention to the brackets. It's really important. The X always goes with the slant brackets or a slash slashes. And then the you have to put the R that says becomes, and then the allophone, the Y always goes with a square brackets, and then you have to put the slash uh, in the bottom and off. You have to put that a slash, and then after that, then you put 
you have that under underscore and then that that line. If you, for instance, this is W and then the the that line alone, that means that is is uh, after uh, and then or the Z and then is is before before of and then if you put that in the middle, it says between. <sighs> then when you finish with this. Then you have to come back to the previous topic that is related to binary fissures. And then I want you to define each group. Each group, not the sound. For instance, you have to define the groups that are in X using the binary fissures. Then you start with the major class fissures. The postsonoran, I mean, sonoran, consonantal, uh, approximate. Then you start, then you go with the minor fissures. And you know, like for instance, continuum, strident, nasal, lateral, and then the other one is uh, the other features. I mean, the environment, and then that depends on on the sound that is causing the the, the the phonological process. And then you have to define each group using the binary features, and and that's the thing that I want you to 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 define in here. Then you have to define each group using the binary features. It has to be in a big a square brackets okay and that's it so this is the book that we have been we have been using so far is Nathan Jaffrey 2008 is name is a phonology a cognitive grammar introduction and this is the the publishing company okay that's it thank you bye bye